Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word from March 11, 2015. This message is part of a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where for several months now, we've been learning how to win in life and how to do it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. This message hits home for me, and, uh, and I'll, I'll explain why as we go through the message. So the title of today's message is The Grace for Sustained Success. We've been learning a lot from Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We learned from King Nebuchadnezzar. And so uh, yesterday's message, we, we closed out Daniel chapter 4. And we looked at kind of where King Nebuchadnezzar ended off. And he ended off at a good place with God. And then now we're going to pick it up at Daniel chapter 5. And we're going to see a different environment. But the title of the message, once again, is Grace for Sustained Success. God doesn't want you just to be successful. He wants your success to be sustained. He wants your success to outlive you. So Daniel chapter five, verses one through four. Um, now, let me just give you a caveat here or a disclaimer. I'm not going to get into what scholars are arguing about in Daniel chapter five over whether or not Belshazzar was um, Nebuchadnezzar's immediate successor or whether or not he was his son or grandson or even part of his bloodline at all. So as I was doing some research on that, lots of scholars disagree. I'm not getting into any of that. I'm just going to tell you about Belshazzar, his disposition as a leader, and how different that was in Daniel chapter 5, opening up, than what we see at the end of Daniel chapter 4 in King Nebuchadnezzar's disposition as a leader. He became a godly leader. So Daniel chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says, King Belshazzar gave a big party for a thousand of his officials. The king was drinking wine with them. As Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he ordered his servants to bring the gold and silver cups. His grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken these cups from the temple in Jerusalem. King Belshazzar wanted his royal people, his wives, and his slave women to drink from these cups. These were cups that were holy cups for, for the Jewish people uh, in Jerusalem. So they brought the gold cups that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his officials, his wives and his women, that were slaves drank from the cups as they were drinking they gave praise to their idol gods which were only statues made from gold silver bronze iron wood and stone so at the end of daniel chapter 4 you have king nebuchadnezzar honoring the one true god not no longer an idol worshiper and opening up in daniel chapter 5 we see king belshazzar worshiping idols and we'll see tomorrow that the writing was on the wall for him and where he was, right? So he had to learn some lessons all over again because um, King Nebuchadnezzar obviously didn't leave something in place that would ensure sustained success. So what does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you. I believe they're gonna be a blessing to you. Number one, very common statement. If you don't learn from history, you are doomed to repeat it. After all the painful lessons King Nebuchadnezzar learned, it is obvious that he did not pass them on. King Nebuchadnezzar dishonored God and he paid a, a terrible price for it. We all know that. He learned his lesson, though, at the end of the day. So here he was honoring God at the end of D Daniel chapter 4. But Daniel chapter 5 opens up with King Belshazzar dishonoring God once again. And then here we are. The writing is on the wall. Number two, God can grace you to become a great leader. Now, so before I talk about sustained success, let's just talk about success. We've been learning how, uh, about godly success and, and becoming a, a leader or becoming a success, but doing it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. The point here about leadership is that God can grace you to become a great leader. In the end, Nebuchadnezzar was a leader who honored God, who led with divine favor. Nebuchadnezzar's path to godly leadership was a pain, painful one, yes, but painful or not. The point is, when it was all said and done, he had the understanding uh, that he was being led, and because he could be, he was being led, then he could lead. Because he was being led of God, then God graced him to lead other people. See, godly leaders understand the fact that they are both in authority and under authority. When you are in authority and under authority, then you can lead. Then you can lead with authority because you're not asking people to do something for you that you're not doing. So when you are submitted to authority, especially in the case of godly leaders to God, when you are under the authority of God, then God will make sure that others will be under your authority. Let me say it this way. If you follow God, God will see to it that others follow you. So you are in authority, but you're also under authority. You are a servant leader and you're submitted unto the Lord. And as you are led, then you lead. 
Number three, when you lead this way, your success can and should outlive you. Nebuchadnezzar arrived at the point of godly success, but his success was not sustained. The Bible is not clear whether or not Nebuchadnezzar left systems in place that would ensure godly success or some type of safeguards that would protect his successors from what Belshazzar wound up doing. We're not sure about that. But the point is uh, that God does not want the lessons that you have learned over the years to die with you. Pass on what you've learned and seek God concerning how to establish a climate that will promote sustained success even after you are gone. And number four, and finally, pour into those coming after you. This point hits home for me. I told you that this whole message hits home for me because I'm less than three months away from my retirement ceremony. After 25 years in the army, the Lord has released me to go on to the next phase of my life. I've been in the army since I was 17, and now the Lord is releasing me to do something else. And as I'm doing that, um, and, and I thank God for, for everything that he's blessed me to do while I'm in the military, but I don't want whatever impact that he's made through me to die with me. We all have seen great leaders who have had tremendous impact only to see their impact dissipate the moment they walk out the door. That's not the will of God. God wants us to pour into those coming after us. God wants us to take what we have learned, what has been entrusted into us, and then pass that on into those coming after us. See, appreciate what God is doing in your life, but take the time to build the bench and ensure that your success outlives you. Ensure that those coming after you are prepared to operate not just where you are, but even greater. Appreciate all the, the coaches, teachers, and mentors that God has graced you to have and everything that they've poured into you. And then take what they poured into you and pour that into someone else. Pay it forward. Don't just take it with you. Pay it forward. Take everything that has been poured into you and freely give it into someone else. Pour it into others so that you can build a bench behind you so that your success outlives you by God's grace and for God's glory. So let's declare this over our lives. Let's speak this in faith. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and my requirement to live by faith. You made great plans for me and you made those plans before the world began. You made those plans by your unearned and amazing grace. Now you expect me to discover and deploy into those plans and for me to do it with my faith. You want me to be a great leader. You birthed me in this world to have a significant impact. I'm here to make a difference by your grace and for your glory. The more I walk with you, the more I become the person that you have destined, designed, and desire for me to be. I am growing and developing as a godly leader in the earth. I have learned my share of lessons, some good and some not so good. And I'm thankful to be able to lead in your kingdom. By your grace, I'm able to influence the people of this world and the systems of this world. But you don't want my influence to die or stop with me. When seasons change and you transition me from one phase to another, you want my impact to outlive me. So Father, I submit myself to you to receive grace, not just for success, but for sustained success. You give me insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding to put systems in place to ensure my success outlives me. And Father, you have blessed me with great coaches, teacher, teachers, and mentors. I gladly take what you have poured into me and I freely pour that into others. I freely give what has been freely given unto me. I build a bench of great leaders behind me to ensure that your impact will be felt far after I'm gone. I declare that by faith in Jesus' name. 
Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up. You get the messages and there will be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, just remember that God wants your success to outlive you. And it will by his grace for his glory. God bless you.